Hey, welcome to the conference Think Outside the Console, do's and don'ts of leveling up your video game IP. The goal of the conference is to highlight some of the most successful practices in the entertainment industry that could, in the end, be interesting in the way we develop our current and future franchises. I'm François Beauregard, Brand Manager at Reflector Entertainment, a Montreal-based transmedia studio, and we are working on our first story well called Unknown 9. I'm here to share some of my observation with you. Patterns that we see over and over again in big franchises that spread over their original format. We call them universe, multiverse, omniverse, story worlds. But first, I want to travel back in time with you so we get a sense of the evolution of the industry and entertainment in general from my personal perspective. I'm in 90s kids. I grew up in a decade with a lot of new entertainment brands and established one becoming more mainstream. It was awesome. Uh, so many great movies, games were creating during those years that uh, I didn't know I was so privileged. Many of you may recall the feeling of going to a blockbuster on a Friday evening to pick up your favorite game and movie and to enjoy it with your friends, family or maybe your date. I like movie and games a lot. My first console, and I still have it today, is my Nintendo 64. When I had long road trips, I liked to bring my Game Boy and play my favorite games like Mario, Zelda, or um, Pokemon. I was often immersed into Story World at a young age. And maybe some of you can connect with those memories. It's incredible to think that those fr franchises are still thriving today. But the way I was consuming uh, entertainment was quite different than nowadays. 2001 was a fantastic year for me. Like many others, I discovered those IP that, when I look at the chart, were the top-selling 2001 IPs. Harry Potter and GTA 3. I want to show you some visuals so we get a glimpse of the feeling discovering these worlds in 2001. Imagine yourself discovering for the first time Hogwarts Express or just the Hogwarts, it was blowing our mind. I mean, being able to see it visually versus, you know, just talking about it in the, the schoolyard. It, it was quite different. Great memories. Also that year was the release of GTA 3, a famous game that was super interesting. When we look a few seconds of the trailer, we see immediately that the cinematographic side was limited. The lore is pretty basic. But even without those details, the game was super awesome. During the early 2000s, I also discovered the Matrix movies. And more than that, I discovered the larger expanded universe of the Matrix. Being a Matrix fan, I really liked and wanted to discover more about this universe. However, I was not totally convinced about this approach. Even if I enjoyed a lot the movies, I was not that into the game. Being a gamer, I was the target audience for this product. But at that time, I was not hooked. And maybe it was the complexity of the story, maybe it was the gameplay, maybe some bugs. I don't, I don't recall, to be honest. But for a while, I was convinced that movie franchises were only good with movies and that video game franchises were only good with video games. But with time, uh, I believe I was wrong. Fast forward 20 years. The gaming spectrum is on another level. Awesome graphics, complex and deep narrative, rich open worlds. We are at a moment in entertainment history where the immersion is way stronger than what most of us started with. I think this quote sums up quite well the level of emotion that the industry can bring. Let's read this quote together. Only games can make their audience feel the emotion of agency. A novel can make you feel sad, but only a game can make you feel guilty for your actions. A play can make you feel joyful, but only a game can make you feel proud of yourself. A movie can make you feel angry with a threater, but only a game can make you feel personally betrayed. I remember finishing Detroit Become Human with a feeling of being proud to have saved all the protagonists, and I really wasn't sure I'd be able to do it. It was different from watching a movie or reading a book. It gave me the feeling uh, that we have reached a new level of engagement with the story. I think that we have the power to reach beyond the players. 
with these stories that we can learn from existing multi-platform franchises to bring our stories beyond gaming. The gaming industry is growing every year. $165 billion in 2020. We are leaders in the entertainment industry. Our industry creates more than ever strong IPs that can be accessible to new audience in many formats, inspiring a new generation of thinkers and deconstruct the idea of gaming being only violence and guns to the less gaming savvy audiences. So now let's begin our journey. And you can see Zelda Link to the Past uh, is quite, uh, you know, epic game. And uh, it's starting in the 90s for me. So now let's begin our journey to observe the patterns that could help us thrive toward multi-platform approach. Let's go. Just a quick note on the methodology. It was simple, uh, using the most popular renowned uh, critic aggregators. Uh, research and books about the fav uh, your favorite universe. I'm not gonna going to explain the difference between multi-platform, transmedia, cross-media storytelling. The importance is that we agree on the quality of the storytelling beyond the original format. Speaking of quality, success can be defined in multiple ways. Five stars or box office revenues are different, um, but both can be, you know, meaning of success. I'm not there to judge on, on it. Um, both are balanced in my observation. We will start our journey with a fandom classic, Star Wars, a movie-based franchise that is still creating passionate debates. Then we'll travel to the comic-based Marvel Cinematic Universe. And up, we take the Hogwarts Express to the novel-based Harry Potter story world. The last stop will be the video game-based Halo Universe, one of the most epic combat game and universe, in my opinion. Each step, will, uh, I will limit myself to three observations. Otherwise, this could be very long. Some of them will be seen in multiple times uh, with different angles, uh, according to the world-building approach. We will synthesize it into a summary list of about eight patterns at the end of the presentation. So let's start. Star Wars. The movie-based universe is my sci-fi side beloved one. However, it's also one that showed a lot of inconsistency over its evolution. Personal fact, I think that the Force is the first concept that questioned me about the invisible forces in the universe. It was the first step on my path of learning mindfulness activities such as meditation, which have become an important part of me and a big part in my life. Just to mention on the gaming side, since 2021, Lucasfilm Games uh, has resurrected and is overseeing all the Star Wars game development. One single universe, everything is canon. They are doing a great job. There's a lot of variety in gaming and really a lot of good games. Being born from the movie industry, those games love to use cinematographic elements to bring up the level of immersion, similar to what we see in the movies. I'll keep an eye on the next, uh, friend, uh, like the next IP they're going to develop within the Star Wars universe. Now let's see the pattern we can grasp from beyond the console perspective. The really obvious pattern I want to highlight is the use of fandom, convention and merch to amplify the brand reach. It's obvious to most of us, but if you read George Lucas' biography or any book about the Star Wars uh, development, it's a case of live or die for Star Wars. Without the fandom and merch sale, there wouldn't be any like Star Wars first trilogy. So being able to leverage a fandom as soon as possible is vital for any franchise. Now on Marvel, to be honest, I was not a great comic book fan growing up. Like many of my friends, my first encounter with uh, comic book was uh, mostly uh, through movies. Now I see comic book based franchises work great to set complex plot lines building strong characters and create distinctive visual identities that would follow these characters as they made the leap to other media. The Marvel game strategy still needs to be proven. Some games are big successes, others are less successful. Marvel games have not reached yet the level of consistency we admire from the MCU. Also, it's not the same universe. The video game are in another universe than the MCU which can be confusing. Now, let's see the pattern we can grasp 
from the beyond the console perspective. The first pattern I want to bring the focus on is the core team importance. It takes more than one visionary leader to create a complete universe. There must be a core team ready to pursue the universe expansion and not relying on a restricted quantity of creators. A core team can be story architect, lore expert, IP producer, community manager, even brand managers that are working with complementary talented people to make sure that the quality of the brand, like the story, the visual aspect, the special effects, are respected without being always a copy. The second pattern we can observe in the Marvel multiverse is, um, and that can be linked also to the first one, is the variety of team within the same universe. All Marvel movies are superhero movies, but they are all bringing their own themes to the universe. That makes them unique, refreshing. An example is Iron Man. You know, it's really refreshing to see a superhero showing some vulnerability, humor, and paradox in the main character, and where the actor also is bringing a lot to it. If you compare to some other superhero movie, it's easy to become a cliche and maybe get bored. In Marvel case, most of the movies feel unique. Just think about Winter Soldier, it's mostly a spy movie, or Guardian of the Galaxy, which is a space opera. Consistency is not a static formula. When you build a universe, you need to bring something new to the audience. Comic book movies, superhero movies used to be a genre to itself, but at a certain point, the MCU filmmakers realized that it really isn't. Leaning into uh, the convention of other genres made their comic book inspired movie way better. But here's the thing. In 2021, we still think of video game movies as a genre there's a big opportunity here. The third pattern is one that makes San Diego Comic-Con go wild. The phase roadmap. If you have never seen those reveal of roadmap before, the latest one had a trailer to it uh, with a strong emotion, a sense of a clear destination. The use of a timeline is strong to oversee the global strategy and planning of the most complex meta-narrative story beyond each movie. As a fan, if I invest my time into a story world, and I like it, I will probably want more of that story world, and I'll be excited to learn that more is coming. A roadmap like this signals to fans that you're serious about storytelling, and their investment in the fandom will pay off with years of stories. Now, up on the Hogwarts Express, to shift from a superhero movie to magic powers. I've mentioned earlier during the presentation my first experience with Harry Potter in a movie theater. Honestly, I was not a novel reader when I was a kid. I had a lot of friends who were reading all Harry Potter book way before me. However, after the first movie, it convinced me to read not just the first book, but the all four books already available. I believe that Harry Potter books were my introduction to novel in primary school. Quick mention about Harry Potter games. Since 2017, Warner Brother created Portkey Games to oversee all games related to a Wizarding World franchise. I think it's a good move to ensure consistency between games and the lore. Like we have seen with Lucasfilm's games uh, and Marvel games, it's a good practice to build a core team to oversee the universe development, no matter the format. There is not a massive AAA game from this franchise yet. However, there is a lot of buzz from their uh, biggest game yet uh, called Hogwarts Legacy, an open world RPG that's coming out next year. I'm very enthusiastic to have more info about this game soon. Now let's go outside the gaming part to check world building patterns. The first pattern, I'm all, and I already mentioned it, is to correctly pace the availability of some products with a mainstream vehicle like a movie. For Harry Potter, the novel were already popular, but being already available, it was easy to fans to go beyond the first movie and to dive into the story world quickly without having to wait for the next movie, even if we all ended up seeing them. Which brings me to another pattern, 
which uh, novel based universe use well? The variety of formats. Being a universe with the novel vehicle brings a lot of detail about the lore, characters, backstories, and history. Just think about Lord of the Ring or Game of Thrones. It's a rich foundation to build upon new media to keep expanding the universe. In Harry Potter case, the movie are adaptation from the books and it's not really an expansion, but it opens a door to a larger audience to the books and to everything related to fandom. Now, there's a richly immersive audiobook, lore-specific podcast, play, there's tons of stuff developed around Harry Potter brand. And Harry Potter is even expanding the resorting world, which includes Fantastic Beasts and a future TV series. Speaking of resorting world, the pattern we see in most franchises is the ability to cultivate curiosity out of the fandom. The platform resortingworld.com is doing a great job on this. Even winning few awards for their web-based immersive experience such as finding your Patronus or choosing your house. I'm Gryffindor, by the way. Marvel is also doing the same kind of strategy with their Easter egg and famous final scene after the credits. There's many ways to cultivate curiosity for the meta-narrative plot. In any case, you need to plan it from the beginning, so it makes sense at the end. Halo is still my favorite combat game franchise. I discovered it with my first Xbox. I fell in love with the campaign, you know, saving humanity, epic music, equal awesome. The co-op mode and the multiplayer battle mode, great memories of doing LAN with my friends and playing the old campaign with my best friend. Also as a fan, I really liked the expanded universe of Halo. I remember buying the Fall of Reach and understanding the past of Master Chief and the Spartan program. Understanding it was making me feel more engaged into the campaign. Being a video game based universe, of course, the gameplay is central to the development. Halo having a linear campaign. The narrative is really tight, which made it easier to build a larger universe with a lot of backstories. Like the other franchises we have seen so far, Halo has gone beyond their original medium. Let's see how they managed it so far. The first observation is the use of key milestones to combine the power of console launch to the marketing efforts around the game. Together, they are able to achieve an impossible amount of reach, and in the end it benefits the IP overall. The second pattern is their ability to cultivate curiosity amongst fans. There is a lot of mystery around the ALO story world. The narrative team is able to use various formats to expand the lore. They even use it to future game ideas. I mean, the list of novels is quite long. If you add the anime, comics, web series, and you also have the platform called Waypoint, it's a good mix to entertain narrative fans in between games. Also, they successfully expanded beyond combat games to go in other gameplay style like strategy game with Halo Wars. So many franchises have influenced my observation. As a fan, I'm in contact with a lot of these brands. There are a lot of similarities between the brands depicted before and the ones you see here. A major uh, point in common is that these brands are top of mind for most of the players. In a way, building a universe beyond games makes them unavoidable even for casual gamers and non-gamers. Building a universe is not just a side project. It's a way to build a solid relationship with your fans and to reach a wider audience. So, if you want to think outside the console, here's a recap. The first pattern we observe in most of the successful franchises is the rise of new talent. Example. Marvel, when hiring new directors, is seeking for experience in a domain in which Marvel does not have expertise. Of the 15 MCU directors, only one had experience with the superhero genre. So if you think again about the example of Captain America being a spy movie or Guardian of the Galaxy being a space opera, even you can add Ant-Man being an ice movie. They're all different genre, but in the superhero uh, movie. 
the balanced brain control giving a lot of direction on certain aspects of the movie. But also they give a lot of freedom to the director, so they can bring their unique touch to the universe. Which brings me to the second point, no static formula. Do people really just watch the same movie over and over again? Harvard Business School conducted a study to analyze the script of every MCU movie. Even if at first glance, these movies seem to be the same, like the superhero, the villain, and the, the end of the world kind of uh, movie, the results were quite interesting. The script analysis revealed that Marvel movies showcase differing emotional tones. So the balance between the positive, the negative emotion, all the expression of the character were quite different. And it's also true for their visual art direction. So not only do the audience appear to tolerate Marvel constant experimentation, it has become a critical element of the MCU experience. Fan goes to the next film looking for something different. In contrast, franchises that have stuck closer to a winning formula run into trouble when they attempt to renew themselves. Which brings me to the next pattern, story world from Genesis. Means you build the mythology, the DNA, with core pillars that help structure the global story arc. Things that stabilize the expansion. In Star Wars, you can think about the force and the potential for good or bad. And uh, other example are, you know, Hogwarts in Harry Potter or the Forerunners technology in Halo. So it's important to think about the story world from the beginning so you can use those stabilizing core uh, pillars in future stories. A stable core team to balance the new talent, voices and ideas that are brought into each story. It's important to keep a theme of people from one to the next project. The stability they provide allows the storytellers to build continuity across products and create an attractive community for fresh talent. Marvel is a great example of a company being able to leverage a core team. Just look at the actor playing the superheroes. It brings a sense of stability even for the fans, and they love this. Speaking of fans, they must be treated carefully. I know it's a given, but not all fans are treated equally. Star Wars used a fandom from the beginning. It even helped finance the second and third movie with a tons of merchandising conference. Every storyteller should go to at least few Comic Cons or any fan based conference to speak to fans and listen to their experience. So many brands are undervaluing these conferences. Just think about DC, Harry Potter, and so on, they are all, always there. But video game studios, sometimes they, they are not taking their place enough in those events. PAX and DGC are good, but it's now time to go beyond those events. Fans are also curious. At their best, IPs provoke an intense interest in character, plot lines, and entirely new worlds. Its whole universe has the feel of a puzzle that anyone can engage with. Moviegoers become active participants within a larger experience. Harry Potter is a great example. They build a whole platform to cultivate conversation about the lore, Fans are so curious, they, they want to read the book to be able just to dig into more details than what they love to see in the movie. The same with Hello Books Collection, you can see the pattern over and over again. The last two patterns for this conference are intuitive pacing and formats. Intuitive pacing is to give a rendezvous to fans for the next part of the story in a consistent way. It creates a trusting relationship with fandom that is already anticipating the next release. Sometime in between major products, studios are releasing complementary stories like a novel, a comic, or a podcast. But note that even if quality is high, not all formats are equal in popularity. Statistically, most story worlds have two major mainstream drivers. Can be movie, video game, TV series, or in, in some case, books. However, Complementary stories are great to build a healthy relationship with the fans only if the expectation of the mainstream product is up to their standards. For all future story builder, here's a final thought to keep in mind. Less is more. It may sound paradoxical, 
However, building a game is chaotic. Building a story world is amplified chaos. Find the core pillars, the backbone of the universe and stick to it. Details will come to life with strong core story. Don't worry. We are a leading industry in entertainment. There are so many franchises with the potential to go beyond console and PC world and to attract more fans. There is never too many good stories. Can't wait to hear yours. So that's it. This is where our journey has led us. So many years of great stories. We started with a link to the past start screen. Here is the end screen of Breath of the Wild. This was a long way since the 90s, but so many great stories. Can't wait to see what the future of entertainment will look like. Through our observation, we foresee a radical shift in how brands and IP will develop their transmedia model. At Reflector, our amazing team is currently working on Unknown 9, a completely new story world developed here in Montreal. Everything analyzed within this presentation represents just one of the many steps we've taken into consideration in order to create our first story world. However, our goal is to go a step beyond and ensure that all transmedia products are considered upon the creation of our IP, not as an afterthought. We have the story and fans at art as we strive to create a harmony of products within the Unknown 9 universe. Some of our stories are already available on unknown9.com, such as the first season of the podcast, the first two novels of our trilogy, and the first issue of our comic book. They represent a small piece of the entire universe that is Unknown 9. We know that we have everything to prove, and we can't wait to show you the sum of our efforts. Whatever I'm saying, you are free to do whatever you want. There is no magic formula. But I hope these observations will lead you to success. Thanks for your time. If you want to continue the conversation, join me in a Q&A session following my presentation. Feel free to reach me on LinkedIn or book me during Megamix. Big thanks also to Reflector and the team. We're working on something great and we can't wait to show it to the world.